Hey everybody, good to see you. Hope you're doing great this week. This is uh, week seven uh, material for MBA 631. So again, we're in middle of week uh, or starting week seven. And so I wanna drop some uh, short video just looking at, at kind of the week and what this content is all about. Um, should be an interesting week. Um, the material in the text, I think, is pretty straightforward. It's a good read anyways, but it introduces a topic that may be relatively new to you. Um, and it, it is something called um, organizational resources. So way back in the early 1990s, there, there were a couple really important papers that were, were written, theoretical papers, but, but um, applied in, in marketing specifically um, based on something called the resource-based theory of the firm. And in essence, the theory says that um, organizations create resources, which are basically skills and abilities, and those resources um, can set one firm apart from another. So in other words, they are the origin for differentiating one, one company or one firm from another, and they have a direct impact on the firm's performance. So if one company has a set of skills and assets that outperform um, and other companies, then they will have better market success and they'll, they'll do better in the marketplace, they'll make more money and, and so on. And so the basis then of this theory suggests that firms compete against each other as a result of these combinations of skills or resources. So resource-based theory of the firm Later, it was um, worked on a little bit more to, towards a theory called resource advantage theory. Um, again, all, all in the um, marketing kind of literature and space. And so, um, so that's what this chapter really takes a look at the internal strengths of a com company. And so up to this point, we've looked at markets a little bit, consumers, how to define and analyze consumer markets a little bit, um, competitors, but now we shift to the internal workings, I guess, if you will, of a, of a business when it relates to marketing. And so this is kind of an easy concept. Um, there are a few pieces that, that go with it. So, um, so how we define a resource, for instance, uh, what criteria you apply to a resource to confirm that it will lead to a competitive advantage, how to use those resources and such. Those, that's more or less the concept. There's also a real key term the text highlights, and it's something called an isolating mechanism. An isolating mechanism is a resource that, um, that, that, uh, that, that I guess protects um, or insulates the company from competitors' pressures. It, it sort of gives them an advantage. Um, so one example of an isolating mechanism might be if you're a retail store and you have a specific piece of property that's in a valuable location um, that, that can't be duplicated or it can't be replicated by any competitors. Like you're in the right place and you have this property and you have this where your retail store is and it gains you a competitive advantage because you're there and others can't replicate it is basically that. So it insulates you and it sort of protects your ability to um, gain a market advantage. That would be an example of an isolating mechanism. And so you're, the readings this week, the chapter um, is certainly certainly there. Um, there's an example of Pepsi who purchased SodaStream uh, to obtain, if you will, a resource that it didn't have. And so we can talk a little bit about why why that's so. There, there's also a framework called the VRIO or VRIN. Uh, framework uh, to assess resources. So this is something that's 
uh, a common model to use. So I introduced that this week that you should be familiar with. And there, again, there are a couple examples of that in the reading, just to give you kind of examples of how that's, that's done. The Barney RBT paper is the origin of the resource-based theory of the firm or paper. There's a couple others there too. There's actually a supplemental piece um, by Morgan, Hunt and Morgan, um, and, and uh, that, that explains resource advantage theory a little bit. But that would be really supplemental if you wanted to, a little bit more information about that. You could go in there. Um, the final thing this week that we'll look at um, from a content area is your reflection or your discussion for the week. I'm excited about this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is new, so um, I'm, I'm curious to see what you write and what, you, what you, your take is. But it, it circles around an idea called a dupe. So many of you may be familiar with this dupe concept where you have a premium brand um, and then some other company comes along and creates a basically a copy of the product the premium brand is offering. They duplicate it um, and they put it in the marketplace at a real low price. People buy the product and then um, and then they become product users in that product category. So there's some really interesting dynamics with this phenomenon called a dupe. And this is not something that is um, in the textbook. It's not. It's an emerging trend that's been around probably for four or five years. I think 2019 was the first time I, I saw some articles about it, but not academic articles. These are popular press things. So this is one of those things that's happening in the marketplace and in industries um, that's not really uh, um, been studied much or anything like that. So so it's an interesting thing. Um, and there's a couple articles with Lululemon involved. And so that'll be the focus of this week. Lululemon has suffered from being duplicated uh, a few times and they've developed a few strategies. But the question here is, um, what are some of just broadly applying the, tech, the concepts from the week? What are some of the isolating mechanisms that Lululemon has. So think of the resources they have that set them apart and protect their competitive base. Um, and how are dupes impacting those, those, um, those uh, short circuiting or, or maneuvering around or taking away those isolating mechanisms? And what can Lululemon do about it? Um, so, so this is kind of an interesting topic. Again, this is one where I try to bring in material that's new and relevant and haven't seen this discussion before. So I'm curious to see what your take's going to be on it. Um, but, but that's going to be the kickstart. And that's going to be kind of where we are for, for this week. Again, we're kind of in the middle of the term. Um, next week, we take the week off to do stage two of the project. So uh, again, three weeks of content. This is that third week for, for the second set. So, um, so, so we'll do the, we'll do the reflection and, and do all that. Remember we have case two that I pushed back a week. So I think it was the 15th, maybe it's due now. Um, so that's pushed back a week. So we have a few weeks before that's due. Um, and uh, I just wanted to give everybody time to digest the first case, um, and, and go from there. Um, Otherwise, um, I, I will be posting again a, a review or not a review, a peer evaluation. It'll be come in as a, um, a, it'll be a link that you link to that you click on and it's like in a survey form where you evaluate your teammates. So that should be live here very soon. So you can look to that. I'll post that in an announcement on Moodle. Um, but otherwise, we're kind of moving right along. Reach out to me if you have questions, though. I'm happy to um, answer emails, but also um, schedule Zoom times if you want to. If you want to meet, um, be delighted to do so. So um, again, let me know how things are going, especially if you're running into any roadblocks or having any challenges. Thanks. Good seeing you. Hope you have a great week.